Hello viewer, we're back with another Kerbal Space Program video and this time we're going to attempt to achieve orbit. Uh, now since the last video I've uh, done a few upgrades, I've run a few missions, collected some science, opened up some stuff on the uh, tech tree and uh, presumably this is what you're going to have to do before you make it to orbit too. Um, I've built a rocket here that's uh, typically, or it's, it's basically three stages. On the lower stage, I've got these two solid rocket boosters with a little nose cone on the top of each one of them to cut the uh, air resistance a little bit. On the second stage, I've got this swivel engine and uh, three of these uh, FL200 uh, fuel tanks. And then on the third stage, I've got a terrier engine, which is good for vacuum, not so good for uh, in atmosphere. And uh, that's also got an FL200 uh, fuel tank on it. And then, of course, the capsule and the parachute up at the top. So uh, we're going to try this. We're going to find out if it works. If it doesn't work, you probably won't see the video. So I'm confident that it's going to. First thing I'm going to do is throttle up, because even though I don't need that for the solid fuel boosters, when I get to the, uh, to the next stage, I'm definitely going to need it to be full throttle for the uh, liquid fuel booster. All right, so we're ready to lift off. Uh, we hit the space bar. And up we go. And I'm tilting it just slightly to the right so that I'll start heading a little bit downrange to the east. Now I separated those into two stages so that the boosters would drop free before I uh, lit the engine and therefore I wouldn't explode it and destroy the craft. Now we're going to switch to the map screen to make sure that we're uh, not getting too high on our trajectory. because I don't have any way at this point of seeing what my actual apogee is and we've got a limited amount of fuel here. Now I'm throttling it way back because I don't want this to get too high up above the planet. In fact, I actually might be just about high enough now. I'm still gaining speed slightly, but now I'm trying to get more parallel with the ground so that I'm starting to transmit or translate the vertical speed into horizontal speed because that's what you actually need in order to uh, achieve orbit. Oh, and we are definitely out of the atmosphere now. I've still got a fair amount of fuel here, so I'm going to throttle right off. Now, it looks like we're probably going to peak at about 100 and I'm guessing about 130 kilometers or thereabouts. So just before we get up to that, I'm going to relight the engine and I'm going to start uh, working on uh, trying to circularize the uh, orbit. And I've still got two stages here. I've still got uh, almost 2,500 uh, delta V on the second stage, which is by itself enough to achieve orbit from here. So this is definitely going to end in an orbit. However, what you need to do is make sure you don't completely run out of fuel. Otherwise, you're in orbit and you have no way to deorbit yourself. That's almost as bad as not being up there in the first place. So we're at 113. We're getting fairly close and I don't want to relight the engine until I get fairly close to that because I don't want to increase this up even higher. Yeah. 
And you can see that we're getting pretty close to Apogee here. 125, I thought about 130. So I probably wasn't too far off on my guess. Now you can see I'm not really raising it up any, I'm simply increasing the rest of the orbit out to a similar point. And now we're going to stage the next one. Now it hasn't told me I have achieved orbit yet on the messages window, which means that I don't have quite enough altitude for the perigee to be out of the atmosphere. All right, so now I have got the contract, contract completion and the world's first milestone, which is enter orbit. I get a 24,000 payout for that, and I get two science points for that, and five reputation, and I've also had a contract that did essentially the same thing, Orbit Kerbin. That's another 30,000. So that's helped out quite a bit with my uh, um, with my money situation as well. The next thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to uh, uh, upgrade the tracking station because that will give me markers to show the apogee perigee and it will also give me uh, markers when I go from one gravity uh, influence of Kerbin for instance out to the gravity influence of the moon which is what's used for the um, uh, for an or a, a, a lunar orbit and eventually for a lunar uh, landing so right now we should uh, just bask in our accomplishment here We've still got a ton of fuel, and it might be possible to land with this, but it's not going to be very efficient. In fact, at this point, I've actually got enough fuel to get to the moon and back. Uh, however, without the, uh, the tracking station, there's not really a simple way to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to call that it for this flight. Actually, we're going to go around and we're going to try to land close to the space center, which is quite a ways downrange from us. Uh, let me zoom out quite a bit. Oh, you know what? I can't zoom out far enough without going to the map screen. Okay, so here's where I want to come down as close to that as possible because I'll get the maximum payout. So we'll uh, accelerate time, which I showed you how to do on the previous video. Whoops. One little thing I almost forgot to do, and that's to uh, do a crew report from space. Yeah, we've already done that, so that's worth nothing. Uh, we can do an EVA report from space because I believe I upgraded the astronaut uh, complex. Ooh, and that's worth eight science. So that's worth keeping. And I probably should have activated the um, the thermometers. The thermometer and the barometric pressure are pretty cool in that they allow you to pull the data out of them without disabling the, uh, the device. So we'll go back inside. We'll do temperature readings. Oh, I guess I've done that as well. That must have been on the previous video also. Okay, so we got no atmospheric pressure. So there's nothing that I can do with that. So we go to the map screen and we'll start preparing for re-entry. Oh, interesting thing there. The SAS turned off when the pilot left the craft. So you have to turn that back on every time he comes back in. 
And I suppose since we're going to the night side, we can turn the lights on. And then we'll go to the dark side, we'll accelerate time. That radio chatter you're listening to is a mod called Chatterer, quite popular, uh, available on uh, Space Talk. I'll try to remember to leave a link to that in the uh, uh, below the video. Okay, so now we're ready to get out of the map, turn retrograde, and this time we're going to actually burn our way all the way into the atmosphere. So you may remember from the previous video that the one with the little uh, X in it is the retrograde marker. Let me just uh, orient myself here a little bit. That means that that's uh, your engine pointing towards the direction the craft is traveling. And then the other one, which is a little T-shaped marker without the X in it, is uh, prograde. That's uh, nose is pointing towards the direction you're facing. So we want to burn retrograde to start to uh, lower our uh, orbital height. And if we go to the map screen, you can see, oh, this is actually an interesting thing that I should uh, talk about. Any changes that you make on the orbit will always take place on the opposite side of it. So we're here, we're going to start dropping our height on the other side. That's one of the things that's maybe a little non-intuitive about uh, the orbital mechanics that it uses. Now, I don't need to drop it this low. All I needed to do was drop the orbit into the atmosphere and then I could have simply jettisoned the uh, the engine and the fuel tank and uh, let the atmosphere slow me down. But in this case, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to burn off all my fuel to lighten the craft a little bit. Actually, you know what? I'm going to burn off about half my fuel because I'm going to want to slow down once I start getting into the atmosphere. And the extra fuel is going to be useful as ballast. It'll keep this end of the craft from getting too light and having me flip nose first. Is the theory. Now you can see the gravity's got me and my speed is starting to increase. And really the safer way to do this would be to cut the engine and fuel tank loose at this point. Uh, however, then you'd lose the, the value of the engine. But it may come to that. This is going to be a relatively steep descent. And now I'm going to activate my precision controls. Those, if you remember, are typically on the caps lock, but I've moved them to P to give myself a little bit uh, better control and not be turning on my caps lock uh, light off and on all the time. That's indicated by the blue markers for the uh, pitch roll and yaw indicators. And I'm trying to keep myself lined up with the retrograde. Because if I let myself go crossways into the wind stream, it's likely to flip this thing nose first. And then I will absolutely have to jettison the engine just to uh, make sure the craft survives.
And what I'm doing here is I'm burning the engine a little bit just to try to keep me from accelerating any faster. And if it does start to flip, then I'm going to immediately uh, hit the space bar because if that capsule gets in front of the engine and with the engine pushing down on it, uh, it may not uh, cut loose when it uh, uh, when I decouple it. Okay, that was necessary because it's starting to get extremely unstable. Now I can turn off SAS and it'll automatically stabilize itself. And if you jettison an engine that's still burning, it will continue to burn. It doesn't stop just because it's disconnected from the craft. Okay, so we can shut these messages down. We can see that I'm now up to 200,000, which will give me enough to uh, upgrade the, um, uh, the tracking station. And as mentioned in the previous video, the chute won't fully deploy until you get to a thousand meters. We'll drop that down a little bit uh, so that there's less time to get to the water after it does fully deploy. And you can see by dropping it that extra 200 meters, it still takes the same amount of time to, uh, to decelerate. So by dropping it that extra 200, I could have actually even gone another 100 more. But you don't want to be getting it too close. The other thing is that uh, the weight of the craft will also affect uh, how quickly it slows down. So if you had a bunch of science experiments on here or something along those lines, you could find yourself uh, uh, hitting the water at high velocity if you uh, lower that uh, full deployment altitude too low. So we can recover the vessel. We'll get the science from the EVA report in orbit. And now we're up to 41 science points. And at this point, we definitely want to upgrade the tracking station. So that took a ton of cash from us, but it'll make it much easier to get to the other bodies in the or and, uh, system. Uh -huh. This also gives us more uh, missions available to take. Explore the moon, that's going to be a nice advance, so I'm going to take that. The ant is one that can be done particularly quickly because it's just uh, tested at the launch site. This is a, a tiny little engine, and it doesn't even matter if it'll get us off the ground. The Ferry 2 term Tourists is fairly easy because all they want is suborbital flights. However, you need a probe core in order to put them into a craft that, uh, like I've only got one person craft available. And obviously if you put one uh, tourist in there, there's nobody flying it. So probe cores are essentially robotic uh, pilots. So I'm not going to be able to do that. 
And I'm going to leave it at that. That gives me two more missions that I can pick up as I continue. We'll see if there's any science that's going to be particularly handy for doing an orbit of the moon. Heavy rocketry, maybe. A bigger booster. Uh, various size engines. These are all uh, smaller ones, though. This I can't get because I would need uh, the other prerequisite, which is general construction, which would take more than I have. And also, this is 90 points, so I can't take that anyways. In fact, uh, I guess I can't take any of these because they're all 45 each. But I can look and see what would be helpful. Uh, for a trip to the moon, this would be extremely helpful. Battery packs. Um, aviation, if I wanted to start messing around with planes. And general construction would give me access to uh, launch towers. Uh, these plasma screens aren't particularly useful. Larger decouplers. Uh, I can already build uh, slightly larger rockets. But uh, I don't necessarily need that for a trip to the moon. So we're going to leave that. And we're going to go into the assembly building. And as I said, this craft has more than enough uh, power to get me all the way to the moon. Uh, just getting into orbit with that much delta V available means that you can do a uh, flyby of the moon. Probably not an orbit of the moon. I don't think there's going to be quite enough for that, but it'll do a flyby of the moon. I'm going to save that for a later video. But essentially what we have here is I'll go through the rocket and I'll show you uh, uh, what, it, uh, what it contains. We have these two solid rocket boosters, which are the, um, the thumpers. We have uh, the swivel liquid-fueled engine and three of the uh, FL200 fuel tanks. You want to, in the early game, try to use as big a fuel tank as you can because you have a limitation on the uh, number of parts that you can use, uh, as well as uh, early on you have a limitation on the weight and the size of your rockets. Uh, to get around that, you'll have to upgrade your launch pad. And then for engines, we have the Terrier, another one of these FL200s. That was the upper stage. And uh, we've unlocked some other engines as well. Uh, these uh, thuds are liquid fuel boosters, or liquid engines, that you go onto the, uh, the external portion of the craft. Let's say you built something that was fairly heavy, but you didn't have quite enough power to get it off the ground. You could use those to increase the thrust to weight ratio. So it's a pretty simple little rocket. It'll be enough to get to the moon. If you want to see that, uh, tune in for the next video. And uh, hopefully that will show you how to do an orbit of the moon. Sorry, a flyby of the moon. It's definitely not going to be an orbit. Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, hope it was informative. Come back for the next one.